So I am Leora from Womankind and wishing you a, a warm welcome to the Cyclical Living Unwrapped series, um, which is where we explore the gifts and challenges of cyclical life with experts in the field of menstruation and perimenopause and cyclical living. So today I am thrilled to be doing my very first interview in this series with Natasha Richardson. So welcome, Natasha. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> so Natasha is the founder of Forage Botanicals, which makes natural remedies for periods and menopause. She has a BSc honours in herbal medicine and runs a successful clinic for over 10 years before writing her book, Your Period Handbook. Now she has a team that, pay, that takes patients while she focuses on product development and community relationships while that other job of raising her son and daughter. In 2021, she graduated from Oxford University with a master's degree in history, in design history, sorry there, um, where she has investigated women's medicine from 1850 to 2020 to 2010, which feels like a whole other conversation in itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, really want to know about that. <laughs> um, so yes, welcome, Natasha. And yeah, we're going to dive straight into some inner seasons explorations here. So right. I'd love to know what your summer superpower looks like. Um, I usually find during the some, my inner summer season that I am very focused I can kind of replicate that now with with a matcha decent matcha latte for about <laughs> half an hour, but <laughs> I did try and find like inner summer lasted for a bit longer, probably like two two days, maybe three days if I'm if I'm really lucky. Okay. Um, uh, but the only downfall to that was that I would tend to say that yes, I could do everything and anything, and and realize that the high didn't last long enough to do all the things I would commit to. <laughs> okay, so that's that's. That's the next area to think about in here is that it what trips you up. That sounds like a oh, okay, too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um and it was only it took me a few years to like kind of realise that I was doing that and to start to use the my knowledge of like cyclical living to understand that that high didn't last long enough and that I needed to sort of pace myself a bit better and uh, you know, maybe agree to a, a little bit less or to give myself a bit more time to kind of complete them yeah it's a it's an interesting balance isn't it particularly when you recognized <laughs> you can't you can't superhero your way through <laughs> every day so, yes so okay so how do you support your autumn self well particularly if that summer has has tipped over yeah um so I used to find before kids that supporting my inner autumn was was fairly straightforward I would choose to have time alone to myself in the house um and have kind of duvet day pajamas try to do very little and just have time to space and time to think um now that I do have kids though it's bit more complicated there is no um there is no time to myself in the house really so I instead it's turned into more of a look can I get myself out for a walk without the kids maybe so that I've got some time to myself to think um in between my two kids when my my eldest was old enough and I was studying my master's the the bus ride to Oxford used to be my time to myself I would really look forward to I I just like love being able to look out the window and not feel guilty about not doing housework or something which is what would happen if I was in the house so it can be something really simple that I didn't even realize would have been my me time but yeah just time traveling by myself is so nice 
and that's it. You've hit the nail on the head, the simplicity. It doesn't have to be complicated, does it? No. Okay, so that's so that's your autumn, that's your pre-menstrual phase. Um mm -hmm. and yeah, well again, another conversation cyclical living uh with parent uh, with young children is a whole other ball game yeah it's a hugely other ball game um so, yeah <laughs> yes full respect <laughs> you don't always get to do what you want to do every month and no. but it can be helpful at least to know what part of your cycle you're in so that you know why you're being so short with everybody or whatever it is and Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. Yes, that is massive. That is huge. Thank you for saying that. And and actually, it's a really, I mean, with your with your children being young, it's a really great um, learning curve for them as well. I mean, they they will grow up with a cyclically aware mum. What a gift! Mm. That is. Huge gift to them as they grow up, grow older. Yeah, I saw recently um, that you can buy fridge magnets for fam now. So you could be charting, you could be having your chart on the fridge for everyone to see, which I love that idea. <laughs> but I, I always wanted to be able to have like, um, you know, one of those like spinner things for the seasons. Yeah. I thought like everyone, all the females of the household could have a spinner that they can be like, today I'm in my autumn and sort of, declare it without having to say all the time like guys I'm pre menstrual can you just lay off <laughs> and actually and actually to be fair to the the the, the folk who are not female for for everyone to have that everyone thing. right yeah everyone, let's, let's just have a, a seasonal spinner for everyone and just to yeah that, that simple that simple language to be able to communicate with each other I think that's such a cool idea. Like I've I've often said, like um, people talk about um, menstrual leave and like whether women should have time off work to, for their periods. And I've always like said they bring it. They brought it through in a few countries. I think Spain and yeah. maybe France. Yeah. And um, people are like, you know, this is so great. And you'd think that me as a feminist that I would think it was great as well. But I really feel like just everyone should have flexible work in the first place and everyone would benefit. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And that's the I think that that's the crux to to all of this education is that it how how helpful is it that only the people who are menstruating know this information? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's become it's limiting, isn't it? If it's not, yeah, yeah. I think you know what. Gradually, I think we're getting there. Gradually, which is okay. So that that's yeah. great. So um, so that okay. So here's a question for mum with you for an awareness of your cyclical living, um, living living it with young children. What does rest look like for you? Um, rest looks like childcare. <laughs> like, <laughs> just don't, I, the closest I can get to rest with the kids around is that they are so enamored with whatever it is that they're doing yeah. that I'm not worried about them getting into some sort of like mess or something dangerous or whatever that they want food soon that kind of thing um but I tend to find that really no matter if they're if they're around it's almost impossible for me to not be spending some mental capacity on their well-being and even when then it took me literally years to feel like I wasn't thinking about that about my male this especially when he wasn't around um I do think that that your your brain must change somewhat as a parent that you've always are constantly thinking about somebody else all the time yeah so you switched off yeah. yeah so it really takes a lot of my um mental focus mm -hmm. to to not be 
spinning that wheel in the background when I'm really I'm I'm here and I'm now and I have to trust that my kids are all right with whoever it is I've left them with mm. so yeah trust for me it's rest is equal to childcare, and then within that um I, I don't know it's different each time it changes depending um on my mood the amount of time that I have available like it's very rare that I can just be like oh I've got infinite amount of time so I'm going to spend the next three hours just figuring out what I want to do today um it, it, it's very finite and so you're constantly uh there's this constant battle of like how much can I fit in this time if I do that does that make me feel like I had more time or less time because yeah. if we even try and fit lots of stuff in it whizzes by if you try and do just one thing for maybe the three hours that you've got or whatever it is then suddenly it feels like you had more time it's, yeah yes. funny like that it's a move it's a movable game and as yeah. you described earlier your your trip on the bus to Oxford yeah <laughs> looking out the window you're not you can't do anything else it's brilliant <laughs> It's like it's literally really like tying someone's hands and being like, you relax now. <laughs> okay. All right. I've relaxed. <laughs> um, so there is a question, I guess, that I can piggyback on that, that, that often comes up in the menstruality world, uh, that if you were to strip back all of your commitments, all of your, um, yeah, take away parenting, take away work, take away all the other commitments around you, what would rest look like? What would you love to look rest look like then? Um, I really love going uh, camping or staying in, um, staying in nature, really pared back, like, um, you know, like shepherd's huts, those, that kind of accommodation where it's comfortable, but there's not more than you need. So there's almost no housework every day because you've just got a plate that you ate from and you put more food in it and then that's that. Um, someone would come and feed me wholesome food. I wouldn't have to do any cooking or cleaning. Uh, <laughs> what else? Um, and read a the book. List is long. <laughs> read a book. I'd love to be able to sit down and read without feeling like yeah. I'm really rushed to, to fit it in. Yeah okay so the, the the rest wish list is there for sure yeah for now um every six months i all of my presents now birthday and christmas is the same present from my husband i've said just don't buy me anything different until i until i change my mind but um he gets me tickets to a spa in london which um... is so low down there's no phone signal you're not allowed phones in at all and it's completely dark it's only lit by candles and the light that goes through the pools and it's lots of different temperature pools some are like whirlpools some of them a blood temperature hot there's a salt pool it's all pools it's amazing going back, back to the water okay <laughs> yeah that's, that's so incredible. for me that's like my treat and i do that every six months and that keeps me going okay <laughs> that's that's extreme rest that's wonderful <laughs> I love yeah it. I come out and I'm like I'm a new person I've had all these epiphanies about how I should be ruling my life yeah it's great <laughs> gorgeous gorgeous so we've come out of that time of menstruation that winter time what are the ch start with what challenges do you face when you come out of the menstrual time and head into spring so now that I'm a mum and I don't always have the um, capacity or um, ability to rest as much as I would have liked, usually the challenge is that I'm not rested enough and I'm hitting spring already tired. Okay. Um, and so there is still an element of like, how how do I get rest? How do I get rest? And it's a constant question, I think, for most people. Mm -hmm. how, can, how can I get more rest? Mm -hmm. Um, and it can literally be like as little as 
how do I make sure that the next five minutes of this tea doesn't get interrupted by somebody and I just I can sit down and have this conversation myself um it's it's as simple and small as that now that I'm a parent when I wasn't I'd be like oh spring I can start my journaling and write down all these wonderful ideas I've had and <laughs> figure out how I'm going to action the points that I've come up with it's so different now <laughs> yes it's um and it does show that the importance of rest so uh, uh, and again and you've used you've used the word simple again it's it's like how can I make that cup of tea last (laughs) that experience of drinking yeah tea last and and feed feed you so I really hear that but it it can be as simple as that yeah absolutely so so okay hearing that it's challenging um how how do you how do you plug into joy does does joy show itself in your springs at the moment? Yeah, um, I do get a lot of joy from from doing wholesome things with my kids that I I find rewarding, um, and it's taken me a while to like realize what those things are. Like, they're not necessarily what I would have thought. <laughs> um, I don't know how to, how else to explain that really. Um. And I have, with my second child, who's five months, taken on board a lot more help with her than I did with my son. That's partly because she can take a bottle and he never could. Okay. Um, so that's a huge difference. Yeah. And because it took me so long to get time to myself again with my eldest, um, It took me a long time and it made a huge difference at the time. Um, When I did start to have time to myself, I just did not realise what I was missing until I started to have time to myself again. Because I've always been someone who needs time alone to think, to process. I'm not not very good in like groups for long periods of time. Um, And even, even living with just one other person with my partner, I really like need... I still need space to myself to think straight. Um, and so brings that out in, in us as well, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a tender time. So, yeah, it can be yeah, very. Mm. Okay. It used to be that spring was like, I really hit the ground running. I'd had my rest and I was ready and raring to go. And, and spring would happen very quickly for me. I would only spend maybe like a day in what I would really call true winter where I was bleeding and I didn't feel like I wanted to do anything yet and then after that day because it was a very it was a day full of pain for me for a long time once the pain subsided which could be within the first like 24 48 hours I was like this is great and I could still be bleeding but it wouldn't be heavy and it wouldn't be painful so I felt amazing all of a sudden um after having my eldest that was already different and I haven't had my period back yet so I'm still breastfeeding okay okay so we'll see what it's like now that would be interesting that would be interesting yeah yeah. because it it can be different after each Mm. so oh okay we'll stay in touch yeah definitely I always (laughs) felt like with my clients that that they it's almost like their reproductive system gets reborn with every child like yeah. the cycles change so dramatically between each pregnancy and it's crazy a lot has ha- a lot has happened in that mm. to our bodies and psyches and nervous systems so yeah. yeah absolutely like right down to your genetics now you know they know that we take on genetic information from our partners with every pregnancy and that never leaves us so yeah, yeah it's really more, interesting. more conversations <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, thank you for um, taking us through your season. So please do share how viewers and listeners can find out more about your work. Um, so the most active place that I am is on Instagram. You can follow us there at Forage Botanicals. Forage is in foraging for plants and botanicals in, in plants. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people call our company Farage, which oh, deeply upsets me. Oh. That's a sad only, times. Only the Brits would understand why. Yes. <laughs> and maybe so some Europe. It's Forage Botanicals. Yes. <laughs> Um, and if you send us a message on there, it's it's actually me behind the the account. There's only we only have one employee and a few freelancers, so it's a very small team still um, doing what we do. So yeah, generally speaking, it's me that you speak to, which is always lovely for potential clients as well. So yeah, and and um, you know, it means that I can make really nice recommendations when it comes to the products. And then if it gets, if it's getting too complicated, then I can forward on to our herb list that we have in the, in the team as well. Thank you. So the word, the word sim simple, simplicity has, has come up so beautifully um, several times throughout our chat here. So that, that segue so gorgeously into um, just letting everyone know that if you are interested in your exploring your own inner seasons um, and you're navigating perimenopause you might enjoy our free womankind workshop that's coming up and it's called towards simplicity and it's the four essentials to simplify your path in perimenopause it's a 90 minute free event and it starts at 7 p.m. UK time on Monday the 4th of September online and there will be a recording if you can't make it to the live and actually there's a really gorgeous gift bag with a, a visualization a very nature based visualization to use when life gets overwhelming and that's for anybody whether you can be there live or not. So if you go to woman-kind.co.uk for more information, you can have a read and book yourself on if that feels good. And actually Towards Simplicity, we'll be launching our new Womankind self-directed online course called Perimenopause Unwrapped. And for more information on that, please head to woman-kind.co.uk. So thank you, thank you for uh, and uh, yeah. um you know hearing that you are in your summer of life in having children um, <laughs> haven't spoken about perimenopause or if how how <laughs> near or far that feels to you but <laughs> feels like it went around the corner with um, the people that I speak <laughs> we, to these days we were, we were, realizing yeah. how early it starts to happen <laughs> um but harnessing harnessing those inner seasons in the summer of life before hitting perimenopause is is the roadmap to how or can often be the roadmap to how your perimenopause and menopause experience actually pans out so this is this is completely and utterly and wholly um relevant to yeah who will be heading down that path at some time and thankfully i get it in my line of work i get exposed to a lot of uh wise hag types that i can aspire to one day <laughs> it's great isn't it <laughs> okay yeah. oh well thank you thanks ever so much and we will see you soon natasha thank you thanks very much laura <laughs>